Hello everybody, how's it going? Matt Tomato here. Welcome back to some more Europa Universalis 4 in which we are making a westernizing career of ourselves, quite literally. Uh, so in the last part we decided that it was time to westernize. Uh, it's a dangerous game but we're playing it and so far we're managing it quite well. Uh, a bunch of rebels did fire but um, it's okay uh, because we uh, are able to deal with them. We have the army strength right now which is great. Uh, so we've got some Ming separatists here but they're also attacking Wu so I'm not complaining about that at all. In 100 population. We're also doing lots of colonizing. And Wu is going to go and deal with those. Fantastic. Wu has a very big army. But then Ning is in there as well. So that sort of makes sense. Uh, speaking of Ning. Uh, we were looking at possibly uh, trying to vassalize Ning. Don't think it's going to happen though. Could always get a raw marriage down there though. Increases legitimacy. Uh, lose a bunch of prestige or westernization lose. Uh, we'll take the prestige hit. Brutal, but what can you do? Uh, so let's bring home the guy from Ning. I'm going to get a royal marriage down here. Um, just because it improves our legitimacy. And things like that. So we'll get a royal marriage down there. Uh, it probably won't help towards vassalization. No, it doesn't. Well, we have a Royal is plus 10, but uh, it's nowhere near, you know, being able to successfully vassalize or whatnot. Uh, Min down here, you're too far away. At least because they're too far away as well, it doesn't help. Chu would, uh, would probably have been willing. Uh, ooh, local goods produced and lose 5 aggressiveness. Fantastic. Chu is probably willing to vassalize. Let's also get a royal marriage here. Uh, we won't go and improve any relations just yet, but the idea is to have a few more royal marriages kicking around. Uh, and that means that um, we our legitimacy will go up a little bit more. Uh, right, so per, uh, Tibet is a place we haven't been for a while. Improve relations. Uh, I'm sort of letting my vassals do some work over here as well, which is... Uh, Fine. The Timurids are being smashed up though, which is not good. Sort of letting my vassals do all the work over there a little bit whilst we uh, sort of park up and uh, get ready for some rebel action. And so some Yan separatists. Yeah, so the Kazakhi separatists are the next ones to fire, and that's in Kipchak. And that's just around here somewhere. Yeah. Cool. Okay. An eye. Yep. Yeah. Fair enough. Okay, a lot going on over here. Uh, lose a stability or lose legitimacy. Oh, jeez. That is brutal. What a terrible time for that to happen. Oh, well. Legitimacy hit it is. Uh, so we could take uh, land lead and maneuver. Plus one. Um, I might want the tech. But uh, land leader maneuver plus one would be nice. Yeah, I think I'll avoid spending my monarch points here. So Mongol and Kazaki Separatists are about to rise up. We've got two armies in place here ready. So let's pick this guy, put the leader here, and uh, yeah. Also, I might want to save uh, some monarch points for leaders. Uh, ignore demands. <laughs> it's so brutal. But if we can do it, then it'd be good. Uh, so Baluchistan is involved down here. Alongside where the heck is that Istan? <laughs> so many Istans and all that sort of stuff around here. Uh, there's not many anymore, but um, there are a lot of them in real life. There's, there's so many of them. There's at least 50 of them, I'm sure. Uh, so the Kazaki Separatists rose up. They're actually quite poor. So I'm going to go ahead and move the army in. Um, so that's fine. There's no leader there either. So uh, We did see that this province is not that amazing. Uh, we have all the manoeuvre in the world, so we will not take the crossing penalty. <laughs> right, cool. So we sorted that one out. So I could go in here and help if I wanted to, but I'm not going to. Because I'm too busy westernising. 
Uh, Liang Separatists. Uh, Cara Dell is Hammy. That's over here. So I might want to move this army across a little bit then. Although it might be able to go in and deal with the Mongol Separatists. So all our vassals have combined together with our uh, ally Changatai here. Also keeps them happy for a while because uh, we're fighting with them. So uh, keeps them happy. Okay. I'm praying like mad that the king doesn't die because we have no no ability at all to uh, increase our stability. We need a flaming stability event here. Positive stability event is what we need. Making good money though, considering. You know, rooting out a bit of corruption. Purely because of the religious unity. Okay. So I could deal with that if I wanted to, but I'm saving the money. Uh, and also, missionary conversions also uh, create, uh, create unrest. Uh, ooh. Ignore demands. Okay, so... Which army do I want to move in here? Let's move this one in. And I think I'd like to move this one across. Uh, yeah, move you across one or two. Oops, looks like Yarkin lost that fight. Uh, in general, it's doing okay, though. Madena with a little treaty with Bohemia, okay. Alright, so let's go in and attack these Korean noble rebels. Panai has become self-sustaining. Wonderful. Okay, uh, so next mission. Conquer Xi'an, colonize Butuan. Uh, I'm hoping that that's one of the ones... Oh, it is. Wonderful. Okay, so it was... Panai that became self-sustaining, wasn't it? Yes. Okay, so Butuan is the one that I want to go to next. Settle chance, all that jazz. That's great. So let's go here, send, walk in around that way, keep that uh, keep that job going. Korean Molucas, fantastic. Timurids accepted peace with Yarkand. Oops. Okay. Well, we trashed the rebels. Okay. Have we got any? Hostile sieges. What? Oh, it was occupied by Korea. Okay. Uh, did, did some of our vassals go over there and sort that out? I was going to say, what on earth was going on there? Right. Uh, so. Uh, let's move you back up here then. Can't remember where you were stationed. But uh, I'll move you to here. And we've got our other army at the top here, ready in case. Kandahar. That's down here as well. Oh, our vassals went and did some sieging. And it looks like that they actually uh, transferred the, uh, the siege occupation over to me. So that means that uh, it looks like I'm getting hostile sieges when I'm really not. <laughs> right. So how are we doing? We're about halfway there. So 1702, so 10 years time. We are officially halfway there. And so far, so good. A general is dead. Well, that's bad. Uh, let's roll. Oh, he's good. 232. Two. I like that. It's pretty good. We'll take that. Uh, extra manpower. Always nice. Visias has become self-sustaining. Superb. Uh, right, so we can then move the colonial army into the next one. So which is the best? 3328. 553. Wow, okay. Uh, yeah. Moving to here. So good. I, I, I still can't get over the fact that nobody tried colonizing here at all. It's amazing. Like, even Ming, before they went mad and lost everything didn't even try to colonize here. It's amazing. I can't 
really believe that. It's crazy. Even Japan hasn't done any colonizing. Interestingly enough, they are friendly towards me. And they would be willing to take a raw marriage. Would you believe that? Um, ignore demands. Tura. Uh, where be that? Over here. Okay. Uh, uh, um, maybe I should make this into a bigger stack. Um, maybe not so close. Six, seven, eight. Nine. Turn you into a 20k stack. And then we'll go in for an attack. Uh, that's going to be quite important as well, I think. Make this into a proper proper little stack that's going to be able to deal with a lot more. Of course. Right. Everybody move into here. Can I still only get two leaders? The answer is yes. That's annoying. So we might temporarily move a leader across here. Right, so get all these guys in and then we'll go ahead and attack. So you're going to Kurgan, which is this one. It's Grasslands, that's fine. Right, come on, man. Move. There we go. Right. So, uh, 20k. Uh, we'll put in the new guy. 1-1-2 one, one, two against 2-3-2. Two, two. Okay. So Changatai is going to lose badly here. Um, I think it's going to lose a fair amount of land. But uh, I'm not too bothered. Uh, that, as long as they don't start ploughing in here and causing trouble for my own stuff. Right. Good. Okay. So we've made that into more of a stack now. Which is better because it means we can actually use this army to attack uh, rebel forces that are sort of mid-range. Okay, Scandinavia exists. Uh, of course, we managed to do that as Denmark, uh, but um, this has been achieved as Sweden. Cool, okay. Hello, Scandinavia. It's probably been there for ages. I've just not noticed it. Um, yeah, come down here. That's going to be a bit better. Okay, Mongol Separatists rose up. I really should use the go-to thing a lot more. Um, right, so you're down here. So again, I'll move this guy around and send that army to go and deal with that. We only have three groups of Separatists now, which is very interesting. Something that I'm not complaining at at all. Mongolia gained a core there. That's interesting. Going in for an attack, though. Uh, I think we've got... Yeah, we've got the maneuver on this guy, so we won't actually pick up the crossing penalty. So we're able to deal with that very quickly. Uh, nice. Truce with Tibet. Um, well, the loss of admin power, we can't really do a lot anyway because we were at zero. So... Okay. Uh, move back up north. So we, our Royal Marriage with Key ended. Um, is that just our three? We've got three vassals, haven't we? Yes, three vassals. So, and we're improving relations in all three of them. So, good. Uh, hopefully, Key sends me a re-request for royal marriage. Hope so. Anyway. Yeah. All this time as well, the annex subjects is burning off for a lot of these things. So. That's the, the other thing that we're sort of thinking about here. We could try and improve relations with um, Scandinavia if we wanted to, but they're allied to the Commonwealth, which is one of our rivals. So uh, We could announce a new rival as well, but we're at war, so... Okay. Three sets of rebels. Growing popularity of tobacco in France. Okay. All of a sudden, the war score has shifted as well because uh, Changatai has managed to take back a whole load of land with the help of Tibet and Qi and Perm. Uh, also, this uh, stack down here disappeared. Okay, so the war score is back in our favour. Uh, that's nice. Yarkin and Uzbek are both low. 
Maybe we should try to uh, send these back out of the war. That's quite funny. Or I could move an army in here. Could move this army in, actually. You know what? Let's go and help out with this fight. Uh, oh, that's a brilliant event. Thank you very much. Let's go and help out with this fight. Let's actually go in here. Uh, you've put a stupendous leader in there, but... Um, let's go and help. We can use this stack to help. Uh, everybody move to here. <laughs> It's a 27k army coming across now. <laughs> Typical. Um, ignore demands. Alright, here comes uh, all our vassals and Changatai. Okay. Uh, we'll see whether they manage to beat that or not. Uh, looks like they will, actually. Uh, pretty good. I'm just walking around <laughs> Uzbek over here, just <laughs> adding a tiny amount of war score, but uh, also it would mean, yeah, Uzbek has just pieced out. <laughs> uh, ooh, Diplo relations or Diplo power? We'll take the Diplo power. Right, move to here. So that's helped with the war effort. <laughs> just separate pieced out Uzbek super quickly. So it's Yarkand and Baluchistan now, are the last ones. Yeah, and I'm just going to walk in over here. <laughs> Don't care about what happens here. Cool. Okay, uh, change the spices. Excelente! Completed that mission. Conquer Nanjing. Okay, well, no, we're not going to do that. Okay, we're ready for the next bout of rebels. Bring it on, Sonny. <laughs> okay, yeah, so good good distribution of men here. We'd be in a little bit of trouble if uh, rebels decided to fire up in the northeast over here. That would be quite funny. But, um... <laughs> well, what do you know? You know what's going to happen now, though, right? The king's going to die. <laughs> Just as I said, everything's going well. The king's going to die. It always happens that way. Improve relations with Jin. See, they are sort of positive towards me. It's really interesting. They're actually improving relations with me. Which is really interesting. I'm not sure as to why. Maybe because they're threatened. Yes, they are. They're threatened. Which is good. I'm glad they're threatened. Because I'm probably going to go in and attack them at some point. Are you... No, you're not at war. But, um... Okay, good. Uh, Liang Separatist. Yeah, no unrest. I did notice that, because that was at 70, and now it's at uh, 40. Okay. Ooh. Uh, lose another admin, bunch of admin power. Uh, you can only have minus 100 at any one time, though, so... The question is, do I actually attack somebody? Temptation is there to go and attack somebody. So, Yarkin accepted peace. So Yarkin will renounce their claims and will pay a bunch of ducats. There we go. The war's over. Okay, so that will decrease the um, relations with our vassals, of course, because you get the in-war together boost. Key has finally sent me a uh, royal marriage offer. Oh, the theologian died. Uh, that's not good. Because that means our national unrest goes back up. Please tell me we have another one. We don't. Yearly prestige is nice, though. Better relations over time. Hmm. Yearly prestige will be helpful. Um, operating at a loss, though, because of... Uh... Ah, there we go. That's better. We had some reinforcements, but uh, it's okay. Okay, the Liang Separatists have suddenly... Uh... Yeah, because the uh, national unrest has increased. Because we lost the theologian. That's annoying. Turn Manguin Danao into a city. Yes. Of course. Uh, it's not too far away from that anyway. So, good. We have plus 200 with all our vassals. Nice. So if we wanted to annex, we could. 
because annex um, annex subjects the modifier has gone. That's super. So if we wanted to annex any of our vassals, we could. So Chu down here would be interested in vassalization. So let's go ahead and bring home the guy from Key. And let's see whether we can't vassalize this guy down here. So offer alliance, because you're not at war. Uh, you're improving relations with me. So that suggests that you're interested. Uh, ooh. We'll lose some prestige. We can't afford to lose stability right now. <laughs> um... What else do we want to do? We want to proclaim guarantee. Uh, so yeah, definitely vassalization in there. Uh, we could send you a gift as well. That might help relations along a little bit. Hopefully it's the plus 25. Uh, plus 20, that'll do. Send a gift. And then we'll park a diplomat there. Uh, we have got 50 available, haven't we? Yeah. Uh, grant autonomy. That gives us some uh, national unrest decrease, which is nice. So we'll park a diplomat down in um, down in Chu with a view to possibly vassalizing them. And from here we can sort of use them to break out of here. Uh, who? Oh, the Commonwealth Annex Moldavia. Okay, uh, so you're getting your uh, your nations back here. Is Kiev a vassal? No. You've been warned by the Commonwealth. But, uh, yeah. No relations being improved there either. Kiev is just an independent. Um, what about Polotsk over there? You're a vassal into Scandinavia, but you're about to be annexed. So, Polotsk is going to change. There we go. Um, okay. So, the question is, do we want a military guy back? Land maintenance modifier versus better relations over time. Uh, I think we want to keep on top of our military. So let's go ahead and uh, keep the military guy. It's going to be important, I think. Keep on top of that. We'll be okay. Now, I think we are starting to fall... Yeah, people are starting to level back up to where we are. But the thing is, we'll have westernized in the population. Fantastic. I sorted that out will have westernized. So that will make all of this so damn cheap that uh, it'll be really good. So we'll quickly zoom ahead of everybody in the local area. So, uh, we turn that into a city. Wonderful. So, let's go to Lanao next. There we go. Can we build any more ships? We're over our force limit for ships. Well, that explains why things are costing us what they're costing us. Uh, I don't understand how. Uh, maybe we should just build a couple of shipyards then. Although a grand shipyard would be something else. But yeah, we need to sort of keep our money here a little bit. Uh, so let's build a shipyard there. Three slots available and three slots available there. And maybe one up here as well. That'll do. Build a couple of those. Uh, that will increase our navy uh, navy force limit. I believe, anyway. Yeah, naval force limit plus two. Good. Um, local sailors modifier. Uh, I don't think we need to increase the number of sailors. I think we're okay for that. Uh, so we don't need any docks or anything like that. But what we do need is some shipyards to increase our naval force limit. How are the rebels doing? Okay, Karadel separatists are about to fire. Uh, Shun separatists are about to fire. Liang separatists are blech. They don't really care. <laughs> uh, we won't take any of those missions. Uh, right, so we're not too far away from managing to vassalize here. You're improving relations with Shun, but nobody's actually improving relations with you. Which means... And we've been called into a fight! Chu conquests. Oh my god, Chu. You've literally started a huge fight. At war with Yi and Shun. At war with Chu. Okay. Ugh, oh, you derps. Fine. Uh, 
Uh, I'm hoping that most of our vassals will come together here and they'll be okay. Uh, ugh, ignore some demands. I don't mind losing a bunch of tradition there, though. Uh, I guess we'll have to send in a stack here. To walk all the way around, though. Um, would Jin be willing to give me military access? <gasps> they would. Okay, uh, let's recall the guy from... Might as well recall the guy from Chu. That makes sense. Turn around. Right, uh, so Jin, with Tonic, uh, ask for military access. Thank you. Let's walk in here. Uh, I will assign a leader. Let's put this guy in. Really? That's annoying. Actually, after, after we've walked through here, I think we can cancel the military access. I don't think we need it anymore. Yeah. Uh, cancel military access. There we go. Just shorten that trip. Uh, so Chu is probably likely to be ruined here. Uh, but... See, I could go and attack this. In the hills, mind you. Uh, and this is against Shun, who is two techs behind me. Yi is also two techs. So, we could chuck in the maneuver guy. Oh no, yeah. We would take a huge penalty there. Eh, you might as well just stay there then. I think this is going to be a bad, uh, bad result for Chu, this. He's basically relying on me. That's literally what he's done there. He's declared that war with a reliance on me. Shun Separatist rose up, and they're literally right here. Um... Again, I could bait this guy into doing some stuff here. So bring the maneuver guy down and move to here. And actually, let's move across to here. And we can try and bait him into uh, attacking into the into the mountains there. Especially with our guy who's like superb maneuver. Bhutan has become self-sustaining. Nice. So we can colonize the final little one down here. And then after that, I guess we could colonize some of these. Yeah, we can keep moving down here, and that would bring us into contact with some of these natives um, who may or may not be interested in vassalization, or we could just go and attack them. Uh, so that's interesting. That will be interesting, that, actually. Um, yeah, right. So if you can move across to here, that would be wonderful. Um, be very good actually if they did. Right, uh, you've moved across to here, okay. Um, let's go and de-siege this then. And what happened last time was they moved across to this province and we were able to catch them. So, ooh, gain some mercantilism, yes please. Massively, massively big. Won the siege of Zion, okay. That was a mission. Conquer Zion. Um, let's go stand over here. Oh, we can't get in there without... Right, siege here. Because otherwise Chu might peace out of the war. Right, stand here and be ready. So that if they do move across there, we'll be able to catch them again like we did last time. Have no leader as well, which is even better. So I might be able to catch them off guard again. So if they move in here, that'd be great. There we go. Right, so 10th of December, 30th of November. We're going to be there way before them. Because we're already in the hills, so it's a quicker quicker move there. So he's going to take a huge penalty here. Um, yeah, ignore their demands. Right, where did those guys fire? Over here. Okay. Uh, no need to bring that army down, I don't think. I think we can use this one. be safe to use this one, I think. Right, so we'll allow that to recover slightly. Actually, you can de-seize that. Uh, and at the same time, you're going to be recovering. Uh, so you're going to get some men in there and things like that. How many do we get? So we get 1,000... Over 1,000 get back into the army, which is nice. Um, is Harmi a hills province? It's not. Okay. 
Um, once again, let's just go in. We should be all right because we'll get a ticker by the time we uh, walk across there. We're going to win this siege first. That's good because that means uh, we can de-seize this one at the same sort of point here. That'll be very helpful. And here we go. This is going to spark a lot of trouble because we have no way to increase our stability. Of course, that was going to happen. So we're going to have a lot of rebels. Also going to be losing money. Which is not good. Come on, win this one already. Not good at all. Do one of the free stability events again. Uh, looks like Scotland has declared a war against England. Okay. So maybe England might be eradicated. Uh, 100 population in our colony. That's nice. Right, but I think I'm going to end the part right here, though. Um, so that's it for now. Thanks for watching. If you like EU4, please be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Uh, but for now, that's it. And join me next time for more for myself, Matthew Tomato, and I'll play through as Korea, which might struggle. So it's going to be interesting.